Flies, to most of us, they're a major pest. Some hide in our drains, some in our fruit, and some just won't leave us alone. But with over 110,000 known species of flies all around the world, most of us have only seen a small fraction of them, and some of them are actually pretty cool. So come see what the buzz is all about as we take a look at the 15 most amazing fly species. Number 15. No Seums These tiny gnats may be a nuisance to outdoorsy types, and even though you'll never see them coming, they're still an amazing species of fly nonetheless. Biting midges, better known as noceums, typically come in at about 1 to 3 millimeters long and can have a pretty annoying bite, but are just about too small to see. Like many other flies on our list, the males typically feed off plants, but the females have developed a taste for blood. Humans and animals will do just fine for the female noceums, and the blood is needed for the maturation of fertilized eggs. But when they do bite, they can leave a seriously itchy red bump behind. It's amazing how something so small can leave something so large behind. Number 14. Heineken Fly While it has nothing to do with the beer, the Heineken Fly does have an affinity for slurping down some sweet, sweet nectar. It's a common hover fly that can be found along woodland edges, hedgerows, and gardens. Much like a bee, the adults will feed on the nectar of white dead nettle and red dead nettle flowers. The Heineken fly has a round, dark orange body, a dark brown thorax, and its trademark long orange and brown snout. But why the long face? Well, they use their snout to reach deep into the tubular flowers of their surroundings to reach the nectar. And what makes this species so amazing is that they can get into those hard-to-reach places that other flies can't. It's an interesting adaptation that sets them apart from the flies buzzing around your picnic, and they can pollinate the other areas they fly to as well. But maybe a bit on the less delicate side is how they lay their eggs. They'll lay them in animal dung, of which the larvae feed on once they hatch. So perhaps Heineken fly has a taste for the sour as much as it does for the sweet. Number 13. Marmalade Fly Here is another sweet species of fly. Given its name because of its orange body, with both thick and thin bands of black around it, the marmalade fly also makes its home in gardens and hedgerows, parks, and woodlands. It's the most common type of hover fly and thrives in the spring and summer months when they make their biggest migrations. So what makes the marmalade fly such a big fan of the warmest seasons? They feed on the nectar of all sorts of flowers like tansy ragwort and cow parsley. This is another type of fly that have a little more in common with bees. In fact, at first glance, it may even look like one to the untrained eye. And because of their colors and the long, thin shape of the body, some might say that the marmalade fly is actually kind of cute. So if you see a small swarm snacking on some flowers, there's no need to run. These flies also help keep their ecosystems alive, because after their larvae hatch from the eggs, their larvae are the prey of aphids. So don't be surprised if these marmalades attract a group of beautiful ladybugs. Number 12. Hornet Mimic Hoverfly with black and yellow markings all over its body, it's easy to see how the hornet mimic hoverfly earned its name. Another species of fly that feeds on the nectar of flowers, the hornet mimic hoverfly uses its colors to protect itself from predators while it's feeding. And at 2 centimeters long, it's the largest species of hoverfly, meaning no other predator is going to mess with this hornet lookalike. But luckily for us, they're completely harmless to humans. An interesting side note, the hornet mimic only came to the west in the 1940s and is quite common in the summertime because of its flower-based diet. But what makes these flies really amazing is they lay their eggs inside of hornet nests. That's one brave fly. Number 11. Hornet Robber Fly Living in the grasslands and moorlands of southern England and Wales is another species of fly that uses its color to mimic a predator, the hornet robber fly. Parading around looking like a hornet, again, this species is completely harmless to humans at least. It can be easily identified by its brown thorax and black and yellow abdomen, and it's one of the largest of its kind. But what makes this species so amazing is that it's a natural-born hunter. The hornet robber fly will sit on a perch, typically one that's low to the ground, completely unafraid of any predators. As its prey closes in, the robber fly will catch it on the wing. They're fast and they subsist on a diet of smaller insects like dung beetles, bees, and even grasshoppers. It's an insect not to be trifled with, and while it breeds in animal dung, the larvae will feed on beetle grubs in the soil once they hatch, so the hornet robber fly acquires a taste for meat immediately. 
Unfortunately, though, this species is in decline because of the transfer of harmful chemicals used by farmers, which in turn kills the fly or leaves them deformed at birth. Number 10. The Timber Fly the timber fly is in a very close race to see who the biggest fly in the world is. The largest on record came in at about 8 centimeters from head to abdomen and a wingspan of 8.5 centimeters. That's a fly about the size of an egg and not something you'd want coming right at you. But the timber fly earns its name from the method in which it lays its eggs on dying trees. The timber fly has evolved over hundreds of thousands of years to develop some pretty serious mandibles, so when the eggs finally hatch, the larvae will drill their way inside the tree. That's when the buffet opens, and if enough have made their home inside of the tree, it's been said that the sound of them chomping away from the inside can be heard from a few meters away as they're feeding on the dying tree's fermented sap. Because the sap provides almost no nutritional value, they take months to develop, but when they finally emerge, they're absolutely enormous. The average lifespan of the adult timber fly is typically just a few weeks, and they do one thing, mate. They don't even eat, and while they're completely harmless, they use their sheer size and mimicry of other flying predators to stay safe. One such predator is the tarantula hawk, which feeds almost exclusively off of, you guessed it, tarantulas. Number 9. Goromidas Heros This fly species just barely beat the timber fly for the largest in the world and it's pure nightmare fuel. Guaromidos heroes are huge. They typically grow up to 8 centimeters long and have a wingspan of just about 10 centimeters and can fit in the palm of your hand like it's nothing. That is, if you're willing to get that close. And while the males feed on plants and flowers, the females don't eat at all. It's not the type of fly you want to run into. A more territorial fly, the female heros lay their eggs near ant hills, and the larvae will eat the unborn inside. The males will make their home near the nests, keeping their broods safe, but also securing them with plenty of mates, seeing how they're living in prime reproductive real estate, turning the ant's nest into a love nest. We are constantly adding more people to the Top 5's production team to bring you all the best content. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on and hit the like button. Number 8. Crane Fly if you've ever seen a fly clumsily bouncing around the walls of your home, it's easy to mistake them for a huge mosquito. But have no fear, because the crane fly wouldn't hurt, well, a fly. More commonly known as the mosquito hawk, the crane fly is a gentle giant, subsisting on a diet of nectar and sweet sugars from plants. They even help out with some pollination in the process. But some crane fly will lack mouths entirely, relying on fat reserves they've built up during their underground larval stage. Like most flies, the only purpose of the adult crane fly is to mate and lay as many eggs as possible during their short lifespan. And when they're not doing that, well, then they're getting eaten by birds, fish, and spiders. So next time you see one lumbering around like an oaf, help it back outside and hopefully it will find crane fly love shortly after. Number 7. Stalk Eyed Fly If flies were sharks, this species would be the hammerhead. The stalk-eyed fly is an interesting-looking little fellow, and it's typically found in Southeast Asia and Southern Africa. The males of this species are territorial, and typically the gender with the long stalks. The eye stalks are used in head-to-head -head fly fights, with the winner retaining the territory and bragging rights. Nine out of ten times, whoever has the longer stalks wins. While flies with longer stalks remain dominant, it's also part of their mating habits and sexual selection. Females prefer males with longer stalks, probably because it makes them look stronger, since bigger stalks are a greater burden on their bodies. So it looks like even among the smallest creatures of the animal kingdom, size really does matter. Number 6. Bee Fly Every spring in the Earth's northern hemisphere, you can find little fuzzy insects flying just above the ground. But don't be alarmed. Even though they may just look like them, it's not a bee. It's the bee fly, to be exact. Another species of fly that uses mimicry to protect itself, the bee fly also makes a very similar buzzing sound to the insect that it imitates. But as you get closer, much closer, the differences are pretty easy to spot. They fly with two wings instead of four, have larger eyes, skinny, long legs, and very short antenna, completely the opposite of bees. They've also got a long tongue, which they use to sip the nectar out of spring flowers. Plus, they hover above the flower as opposed to landing on it, which would make them much more susceptible to becoming food for a predator like a spider or an ambush bug. And these flies are important too. 
although the buzz may be obnoxious, they still carry and spread plenty of pollen. Number 5. Tachinid Fly While we may often want to call pest control when there's a fly infestation, the tachinid fly is a bit different because it is pest control. They're the perfect species of fly to have flying around the garden because not only do they eat nectar and pollinate the flowers, but they also feed off aphids, caterpillars, beetles, and even sawfly larvae. Any insect that can ruin a garden in one season is a tasty meal for the tachinid fly. The way this fly reproduces is pretty amazing too. Some will lay and attach their eggs to other leaf-eating insects, and as they hatch, the larvae will feed on the living host. Other tachinid flies will lay eggs on foliage in hopes that another larger insect will gobble them up. The eggs will hatch inside the host's body, and the larvae will proceed to eat them, only this time from the inside out. Some females can even pierce a host with a tube-like organ called an ovipositor and lay their eggs inside them. It may be morbid, but the tachinid fly is one good species to have around. Number 4. Scorpion Fly Flying around the nettles and brambles of gardens and hedgerows is the scorpion fly. But don't be alarmed, because the name is just that, a name. Thankfully, this isn't a scorpion with wings, although it is definitely strange looking. It does have a scorpion-like tail, though, which the males can use in their courtship displays. They usually mate at night, which can be a pretty dangerous game for the males. He'll present his mate with a nuptial gift, a dead insect or a mass of his own saliva, to let her know he likes her. It's a lot cheaper than an engagement ring, but the female will usually kill the male during the mating. But when all is said and done, the female lays her eggs in the soil, and emerging larvae will live and pupate at the surface. Besides their ominous-looking tail, the scorpion fly has a black and yellow body, a reddish head with a long beak, and dark patches on the wings. If you don't know any better, it can look like a strange butterfly when you get up close, but they've got a long beak-like projection from the head that they used to feed with, typically on other dead insects. And the scorpion fly will even steal some fresh meat from a spider's web. But don't worry, they're harmless to humans. Number 3. Bat Fly Sometimes even a vampire can fall victim to a vampire. That's where the bat fly comes in. Looking more like a tiny six-legged spider, the bat fly is wingless and with long, clawed, bristly legs, perfect for latching onto the fur of bats. They're parasitic flies, and they feed on the blood of their bat hosts, who after thousands of years have learned to live with them on their body. The only time the bat fly will leave the flying host is to lay eggs, and instead of laying thousands of eggs, hedging their bets, and hoping that a few will survive, the female bat fly simply gives birth to a single fully developed larva. The egg hatches inside of the mother's body, and the larva feed off the milk glands before its birth. The female will always give birth in a bat colony, ensuring that the next generation doesn't have to search long for a host, because they can't survive for very long without the taste of blood. Number 2. Leaf Miner Fly This species of fly may be a bit of a nuisance to gardeners and nature lovers, but they are no less amazing. The leaf miner fly lives up to its name, but it's easy to spot where they've been by the patterns they've left behind on leaves. They're small and dark and can easily go unseen, but they lay their eggs on leaves and foliage, which their larvae feed on. They mine through the greenery and branches, leaving behind some awesome-looking patterns that can only exist in nature. And while the leaf miner larvae are indeed somewhat damaging to plants, they only last for one generation and are often plagued by parasites that take care of them before too much damage is done. Number 1. Cheese Skipper Try not to lose your lunch with this one. Also known as the ham skipper, the cheese skipper fly is interesting for a few reasons. First, their larvae have the strange ability to launch themselves into the air. They feed on decaying matter and have even been found in the exhumed remains of Egyptian mummies. They enjoy putrid smelling meats like old ham, bacon, and beef, but what they really love is moldy cheese. The females will lay their eggs in the old food, and once they hatch, the larvae will go to town. But if you travel to Italy, you can enjoy a famous or infamous pecorino cheese known as casumarzu which has these cheese skippers intentionally introduced into it. The larvae digest and ferment the cheese and are left inside to be eaten by humans. The Kasumarzu cheese is especially pungent and gooey, and the thousands of maggots can be seen and felt wriggling inside. 
Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.